Hi, I'm Dr. Shahriar Hossein. Welcome back to part two of Data Science Workshop 1. We barely started to discuss NumPy in the previous video. Let us begin from where we left in the last part. As I was saying, as a regular Python list, I am creating a variable named list1, which contains 5, 2, 10, and 3. I can click this play symbol to execute the line. Alternatively, I can hit shift plus enter or shift plus return on a Mac to run a line. Again, I am using Google Colab as my Python editor. This editor on the screen is like Jupyter Notebook. I can just write the variable name such as list1 and then press shift plus return to see what the content of the variable list1 is. The content is printed. If you are using a regular Python editor such as spider, then you will have to use the print function to print the content of the variable list1. Anyway, this variable list1 is a list variable. Now I want to create a numpy variable. Let us import the package numpy as np. Therefore, I can use the variable np to call numpy functions. I can create a numpy array um, that will copy all the elements from list1. I use np.array and in parenthesis, I can provide the Python list I already have. I will save this newly created numpy array in a variable named arr1. Therefore, R1 is an array object, more specifically a NumPy array object. Now, what is the benefit of using ARR1 or R1 over List1? That is, what is the benefit of using a NumPy array over a regular Python list? To demonstrate the benefit, let me create another Python list named List2 that contains 5, 6, 20, and 31. I will create a second NumPy array called R2, which will copy the content of list 2. So R2 is a NumPy array. Very well. List 1 and list 2 are regular Python lists. R1 and R2 are NumPy arrays. As you know, Python is a flexible and versatile language. Unlike programming languages like Java, you can use the plus operator on two arrays or two lists. What will happen if we apply the operation list1 plus list2? Practically, the operation will not add the elements of list1 and list2. Rather, a combined list will be created where we have the elements of list1 and then the elements of list2. That is, the plus operation here is concatenating the two lists. It is not really mathematical addition of two arrays or two vectors. Let us see what happens if we add two NumPy arrays, R1 and R2. Clearly, cell-wise addition is performed. 5 plus 5 is 10. 2 plus 6 is 8. 10 plus 20 is 30. 3 plus 31 is 34. This demonstrates that NumPy is actually equipped with mathematical functions. This np, which is the numpy reference, has many, many built-in functions that you can use to process your data. Notice, you even have matrix multiplication operations. See, you have the matmal function for matrix multiplication. You have add, subtract, etc. Why do we need matrix operations here? A data table forms a matrix or a two-dimensional array. Many data mining and machine learning algorithms require matrix operations. 
NumPy has efficient matrix operations. It is more convenient to keep data in NumPy multidimensional arrays than keeping the data in a Python list. Alternatively, there is TensorFlow, which also contains matrix operations. TensorFlow also includes GPU-optimized matrix operations. We are not looking at TensorFlow now, but I just wanted to mention TensorFlow as a reference for the future. As a quick example of matrix operations, I'll create two matrices. I can create a matrix with two rows and three columns, like this. Or I can create a matrix with random numbers using NumPy's random number generator. I can ask the function to generate a matrix with five rows and four columns, like this. Oops, something is wrong. There was a spelling mistake. After correcting it, we see five rows and four columns in the generated matrix. Let us make sure that we save the generated matrix in a variable. We are saving the matrix in a variable named D1. Let us create another matrix with four rows and three columns. Save it in a variable named D2. I should be able to do a multiplication between these two matrices, D1 and D2. Let us use np.matmul and pass D1 and D2. Of course, the result will have five rows and three columns because D1 has five rows and four columns and D2 has four rows and three columns. That is, NumPy is doing the regular matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is important because we can consider that a matrix is a tabular data set. As stated earlier, many of the algorithms in machine learning use matrix operations. At this point, I told the audience that I just wanted to demonstrate a few things about NumPy because it is a basic data structure quite commonly used by many of the algorithms. NumPy pops up very frequently for data science practitioners who write programs to solve analytic problems. In the description of the video, I will provide a link for the code on the screen. You will be able to load the file on Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab. Now we are moving to Pandas. The Pandas library helps in reading from a CSV or an Excel file, write to a file, manipulating tabular data, exploding the data, and do a little bit of cleaning when required.